All right, so here's our, uh, our final example of spherical coordinates. Um, we'll, we'll think about how to do this one in cylindrical as well, but let's, um, let's talk spherical first. So what do we have here? Um, we're trying to find the volume of some sort of cup. So what are we, what are we talking about here? Well, let's draw in some coordinate axes, and let's think about what we have. Uh, this object here is a cone, right? So it's a cone. Looks something like this. Here's the line, the plane, z equals 1. And we're going to go up. until we hit z equals 4. Okay, so I think you can, you can see the, the cup in question here in this diagram, right? So we want to find the volume of this cup. Now, um, you might think that maybe this should be, maybe this should be cylindrical coordinates, right? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's your, you have to think about this. Should this be cylindrical? Should it be spherical? Um, well, let's, let's think about how this looks in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, and then realize that maybe we should give uh, spherical a shot after all, right? Um, you know, the thing about cones is that a cone is kind of, it's easy to describe in both spherical and cylindrical coordinates. Um, these horizontal planes, those are a little bit easier in cylindrical, which is why you might think cylindrical first, right? Um, so in cylindrical coordinates, let's think about what we would have. Um, well... So in, in cylindrical coordinates, our cone becomes simply z equals root 3r, right? x squared plus y squared is r squared. So this is 3r squared under the square root. We take the square root, we get root 3 times r. Okay, that's all well and good. Um, and we can kind of work out intersections, right? When, uh, when z is equal to 1, well, we get r is 1 over root 3. That's not so bad. That's a circle. z equals 4. We get r is equal to 4 over root 3. Aside from the fact that there's some square roots in there, and maybe those look a little ugly, um, that's not so bad. But you can, you can maybe see what the issue is here. Um, the issue is that, well, we're certainly going all the way around. So, so no matter what, you know, overall we know that we know that theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi, right? Um, but then we have, we have this issue. When r is between 0 and, well, once we hit this, this bottom circle, right, uh, 1 over root 3, um, square root of 3, we have that z goes between 1 and 4. Okay? But... Once we get outside that circle, the lower bound for z changes. It changes from, from the circle to the cone, right? And so for 1 over root 3 to 4 over root 3, we can see that z is going to be root 3r. So z will go from root 3r to 4. Um, so it's... It's not that bad, but certainly you need, you need two, two integrals, right? So in cylindrical coordinates, the volume is going to look like this. The volume is going to be, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 over root 3. And the integral from 1 to 4 of r dz dr d theta. 
But that, that gives you the volume of this, this cylinder, right? It gives you the volume of, of, this, of this piece inside the cup. And you still need to get the volume of the portion of the cup sitting outside that cylinder, which is why you have to add on the second integral. You have to add on the integral from 0 to 2 pi and from 1 over root 3 to 4 over root 3 and then root 3r to 4 of r dz dr d theta. Okay, so it's not so bad, right? I mean, at least the two integrals are reasonably straightforward. Here, all the bounds are constants, which is nice. Here, there's one variable in the bounds, but it's a pretty easy variable to deal with. Um, so you can tackle that if you have to. Um, spherical coordinates, let's see what it looks like in spherical. So the, the downside in spherical coordinates is that we've got we've to start tinkering with these equations a little bit, right? So what are the planes? So the planes, the planes look like this. Um, Z, remember that Z is rho cos phi, right? So we have rho cos phi is equal to 1. And we can write that equation as rho equals secant phi. And then we have rho cos phi equals 4. So rho is equal to 4 secant phi. So, you know, th those functions for the, for the planes, uh, they don't look so nice. But at least once we've got those, we know that whenever we're inside the cup, we start at the origin, right? We enter when, when rho is equal to secant phi. And we exit when rho is equal to 4 secant phi. Okay, so that's not so bad. What about the cone? Well, rho cos phi is equal to, well, what do we have over here? Well, maybe it's easier to translate from cylindrical here, right? Uh, it's root 3 times r. And remember that r is rho sine phi, okay? So then we get, what do we get? We have that, uh, well, we can cancel the rows, right? Because rho is not equal to zero when we're inside, when we're inside the cup. And we could write, well, so cos phi is root three sine phi, um, or we could write this as, we could write it as sine phi divided by cos divided, we could say that tan phi is 1 over root 3. And that tells me that phi is pi over 6. OK, so we have that. For some reason, I thought it should be pi over 3. Um, let me know in the comments if you think I actually have messed up, but I think, I think we've got this. Um, all right. So this sets things up for us, right? This sets up our bounds. Oh, yeah, no, this does make sense. Pi over 6. I'm thinking of, like, you know, pi over 6 measured down here, but no, pi over 6 is measured from the z-axis. So, yeah, this makes sense. All right. Okay. So now we know that phi should start at 0, should go to pi over 6. That makes sense. Theta still goes from 0 to 2 pi. So now we're set up to write down the integral in spherical coordinates. In spherical coordinates, the volume looks like the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi over 6. And then the only part that's a little bit kind of not so nice. We go from secant phi to 4 secant phi. And then we have our 
rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And now we have it set up in spherical coordinates. Um, you, can, uh, you can stop here if you want. We're already at the 10 minute mark. That's probably long enough for a video. Um, if you want to stick around for a few more seconds, we can at least um, see what happens when we do the row integral. So we're going to get uh, one third row cubed, right? So we're going to get, and by the way, we get a two pi from the theta. So let's just put that out front. Two pi over three, zero to pi over six. So from the upper limit, we're going to get 64 secant cubed minus one secant cubed. We get 63. secant cubed, which is cos, right? Um, so with a little bit of simplifying, you can get it down to there. Right? You could even, I guess, you know, 63 over 3, you can, you can simplify that if, uh, if you're so inclined. Um, this, uh, this remaining integral can be done with a u substitution, so it's not too bad. All right? so you, you pick your poison, I guess. Uh, you either choose to do a pair of relatively straightforward integrals in cylindrical coordinates, right? Neither of these are difficult, but you've got to do two of them, so there's a little bit more work. Um, or a single integral in spherical coordinates, but you've got to deal with some trig functions, so there's a little bit more, more work involved there. Um, I'll, uh, I'll let you try finishing those off, and you can decide which one you, uh, you like the best.